You're watching EVH and Gear TV, brought to you by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. An official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com. And now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH artist Eric Broadbent. Hey everyone, happy Thursday evening to you all. Welcome to EVH and Gear TV. We are live. Beautiful, beautiful day today and we're heading into, uh, basically it feels like the weekend already, doesn't it? A lot of you, uh, at least here in Canada, uh, kids are done school today, so it's kind of nice. It's uh, kind of a celebration time for the kids, sometimes for the parents. Um, actually, I'm very happy to have Junior home uh, for the summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get to do a lot of jamming with them and, and hanging out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tonight, we're going to be taking a look at uh, a really cool announcement that came out out of, out of NAM, Summer NAM in Nashville. EVH gear, uh, a lot of times, doesn't really attend NAM, and if they do, it's kind of in, in you know smaller form. And a massive announcement coming out of the camp there today with uh, three new guitarists from, from Eddie Van Halen and obviously EVH gear in the Eruption 78 series kind of to uh, celebrate, yeah, obviously, the 40th anniversary of uh, their debut album. Uh, but uh, it pretty pretty awesome. Now, they're not exactly going to be the cheapest guitars in the world. Um, you know, the, some of the entry-level one is, I'd say, somewhat affordable. And then they go up from there, as you can see from pricing on the banner there. Actually, there it is. <laughs> it's so hard to... P there, that way. I'm pointing the right way now. You can see the different guitars. There's three different tiers. Uh, and we'll go through some of the specs on EVH's uh, website as well, too, EVH Gear's website. Um, but uh, I'll show you some of those as well, too. We'll go through, look at some of the, the specs, uh, pricing, all that kind of fun stuff. Obviously, I don't have one of these guitars, so I'm not going to have one of these guitars. Uh, so I don't have anything to show you. But we'll just kind of discuss together and get everyone's opinion on it. So thank you, everyone, for uh, dropping by, popping in on a Thursday evening. Before we get right into the show... Um, a couple things coming up here on the show tomorrow night back at regular at regular times nine o'clock eastern i've got guitarist bill lanero on the show and uh, we're probably going to get a good look at some of his wolfgang guitars he's got some incredible pv wolfgangs uh, i think he's more of the hardtail player i think he may have the odd one with um well thank you for all the subscriptions people i appreciate that um we'll look at some of his hardtail wolfgangs we'll talk about his upcoming tour all kinds of fun stuff He's even got some small replica Wolfgangs uh, he's got out for sale, somewhere around 30 bucks US. We'll be talking about that. And Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern over on the Helix Hour show, uh, for those of you that haven't seen that, it's kind of a fun show, 60 minutes, hence the name Helix Hour. I've got uh, Leo from Frog Leap Studios, a uh, pretty amazing YouTuber. He's got, uh, I think, like 2.5 million subscribers on his channel. We're going to be talking about um, doing his uh, you know, fantastic metal covers of famous songs, everything from Toto to um, oh, Adele and every uh, Katy Perry and everywhere in between. Uh, let me see here. Let's jump over and say hi to people over in the chat here first. So we've got Darren Moore, Rock and Roll. He's working on a Stripe Limited Edition Wolfgang as we watch. He says he's excited about the new Eruption 78. My beautiful Nocturnal butter Butterfly is here running the chat beautifully as always. Uh, thank you for that. And Quentin James is here saying, hey, all. Uh, John Lane's here saying, nice. Mark Taylor's here. Richard Henry's here. Hey, all. 102 a.m. in Ireland. It's a late one. Oh, boy. <laughs> it is a late one for sure. Um, and in Sonic Matt, I'm already complaining about the heat. And as much as I tend to, I'm normally one to complain about it too. It's our winter here was so brutal that... Uh, I just, I just have to accept it. I, I like it. I, anything other than that winter that we had. Uh, who else we got here? Um, Joseph, uh, did I miss? Did I miss Joseph? Um, because Nocturnal saying uh, hello, Joseph. Did I miss a Joseph? I'm sorry if I did. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Zach Thong is here saying, "Hey, Eric, Lyle Ketchum is here." And Lyle Ketchum says, "I won't have one unless I win it." Probably the same as me too. And uh, am I, I am on live chat. Hopefully I'm not missing anybody because uh, it looks like I might be missing a couple of people. Um, Frank Fitzgibbons is here from Akron, Ohio. Uh, Terry's gg and is here. David Ennis is here. Little David Ennis. Uh, let me see. Who else did I miss? Lyle Ketchum. I think I got everybody. So let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at some of these specs. First of all, before we get into the specs, I'm going to show you a couple of galleries. Uh, my good friend Brian Cazell. Uh, over in the Helix communities, you know him as Coffee Drinker. He's on the show here a lot. He's at Summer Nam right now, and he took some uh, some pictures. We'll start off probably, let me see what gallery I've got queued up here. One sec. Okay. 
Um, yeah, a bunch of new subscribers. Thank you so much, people. I really appreciate that. So here's some, some of the galleries. These are some of the, the stock uh, images from the press release that was shared today. So obviously there's the painting process there, um, full painting and, and taping process. So it's quite cool. Nice to see this stuff um, in, in, you know, in progress, I guess we would say, right, as they're working on it. Kind of cool. Some of the relicking going on there. So these are some of the actual stock photos that were shared today. And I'm going to show you some more close-ups here in just a moment. So I'm going to jump over to, uh, there's a nice classic photo there, right? Let's jump over to Brian's gallery. One second. Let's turn off this one and let's turn on Brian's. So Brian shot these at NAMM today. So here's some close-ups in the booth itself there too. That's some of the care package, which we'll talk about in a second as well. Um, and the various specs. Nice shot there. Terry's saying rib fest starts here tomorrow till Sunday. Come get some if you love ribs. Yeah, I would love to do that actually. Uh, so the great shots here as well too. There's all three of them. Doesn't that look awesome? It's even got the little chip out of the first fret, which is quite cool. Obviously taking a fall on something, you know, or whatever. However, Eddie chipped that one back in the day. So that's that's a gallery from Brian Cazell. So thank you, Brian, for sending me that. And then here's some other ones that I just assembled today too off of uh, the EVH gear site. Let's have a look there. Oh, that's the same one. One second. I'll try that again. Here we go. So these are some of the actual. This is the Super 78. This is the most expensive of the three. But have a look at that. It's a beautiful looking guitar. I'm enjoying a little bit of a cold Gatorade because it's warm in here. Boy, and I just walked to the store for a quick little refreshing walk. So there you go, VH 2018, Eddie Van Halen signed. He always dates everything, at least he likes to. Look at that, beautiful figuring on that. Looks great. Let's uh, let's jump back over here for a second and actually let's load up the website and have a peek. All right, there we go. All right, so I've got the EVH Gear website open right now. So if you go to EVH Gear, right on the home page, you click on it, it's going to take you to uh, on their slider. It takes you to this page here and talks about the Eruption 78. Of all the guitars I've ever built, the white and black guitar will always be my favorite because uh, it did all the things I needed the guitar to do, which prior to that guitar did not exist. So much changed because of it. I recorded the first album, and it did uh, the first world tour with it. The 78 Eruption Tribute is as close to my original in sound uh, and feel as humanly possible. I'm incredibly proud of it, says Eddie Van Halen. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I agree uh, some of you guys are commenting on the price, um, but, but it, it is a little... Uh, it, it is um, a little pricey for sure. And um, poison, or I was going to say Poison Ivy. Nocturnal Butterfly has, <laughs> I keep getting her new YouTube channel wrong. Uh, she's posted the link for you as well to evhcare.com slash extra slash eruption. You can have a look. So it gets in here too. This obviously was a surprise. I knew nothing of this guitar. Um, so it goes, I'm not going to read you all this, all the uh, information here, but I will read you some of the stats when we get to it. This is uh, pretty awesome. So you've got the three models starting from the, from right to left. You've got the 78 Eruption limited to only 40 pieces, the 78 Eruption Relic, which is limited to 30 pieces, and then the Super 78, which is limited to only 8 pieces. So there are some extremely limited runs. Um, I've been told some of those have been already sold. Uh, maybe some of the extremely relic ones, or sorry, extremely limited ones, maybe they're all sold out. I don't have sales figures, but I heard some rumors today that a lot of them were sold. So uh, uh, who knows? But it's kind of a cool, cool thing. At least there's some buzz coming out of NAM and something cool from EVH gear. So uh, we're quite happy about that. But let's start off with the 78 eruption and let's have a look here. So let's take let's take a look at that. The uh, and these as I click on each one of these, it will show up the uh, the other specs. So the 78 eruption is limited to only 40 pieces worldwide, 25 and a half scale length, ash strap body, bolt on maple neck with oiled back finish. Uh, straight 12-inch radius maple fingerboard with uh, uh, catalogs dots. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Black side dots and 21 jumbo frets. And see, that always throws me for a loop, too. I, I don't like necessarily 24 frets, and I don't like 22, uh, 21 frets. You know, vintage. I like 22. I really do. So if I was playing this guitar, I would just feel a little awkward with it. Um, but that's my only only beef. That plus I can't afford it. Um, but anyways, uh, hand-cut black pick card, just like what Eddie would do back in the day. Um, EVH Frankenstein humbucking bridge pickup, vintage Fender Stratocaster bridge with Clusen uh, brass block, uh, eye screw strap hooks, obviously, of course, to, to Eddie, uh, Shaler tuning keys, uh, white with black stripes, hand painted lacquer finish, pristine condition, and the 61071 stamped neck plate. And over to the case candy, which is pretty cool 70, 78 eruption case candy, you get an autographed Van Halen vinyl, so the, for the debut album. 
I think that's autographed by Eddie only if you scroll down and have a look. Uh, obviously, yeah, obviously just by Eddie, but that's awesome. Who, who else would want anything else, right? Unless you could get all four. Um, custom made, correct, period, um, guitar case, g case, 78 str- uh, chain strap, three-in-one oil can, a signed certificate of authenticity, two packs of 70 Zero Fender Super Bullet strings in uh, recreated packaging. And if I'm not mistaken, those are 9 to 40s. We'll get into the, the specs a little bit. I forgot for a while there. Eddie was using like 9 to 40s, uh, 9 to 42, and then sometimes 9 to 46. Uh, light top, heavy bottom, but 9 to 40, I totally forgot about that. Um, two, so we got the strings, two, a uh, couple of Van Halen 70s tortoiseshell picks, backstage pass vinyl cloth sticker on the case, plus one unused sticker inside, an 8x10 78 concert photo of Eddie, and I believe that's signed as well too. Let's have a look at that, scroll back down. Um, looks like it is, yeah, that's awesome. And exclusive eruption collector's booklet. I'd like to see that, that'd be very, very cool. I'd like to see the contents inside of that. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Um, uh, Todd Burke's here. Um, I know. I, I agree with you, Todd. He says it's very cool. He'd rather have a tour. I, I know we all would, too. And don't give up on them yet. You never know. Um, it's not looking the best by any means. I'm going to be just as optimistic as the next guy. It's not looking the best for any kind of tour, but we can always hope, right? You can always, always hope. And so you never know when it comes to Van Halen. I think those guys are the best when it comes to uh, keeping secrets. I think they are the best when it comes to keeping, you know, things under wrap until it's time. So who knows what will happen? We'll just have to be patient and see. Um, and all the add-ons are what make those prices. I do feel validated more. That's from Terry. And I, I agree. Uh, you're, you're, they're giving you something for the money for sure. 9 to 40 seems a bit too thin for me. I'm more of a 9 to 46 for lead stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I got you. No worries about the uh, spelling error. Um, and Jack J. Martin says, Eric, are you going to get any? Unless uh, Eddie Van Halen sends me one personally? No, I will not be getting one. And I don't think that's going to happen. So unless Eddie, if you're watching, you want to send me one, I'll, I'll, I'll take one off your hands, but, uh, no, I won't be purchasing one, but you know what? I just definitely at least want to share some of this stuff with you for sure. So let's jump back over. Actually, we can look at some of the, the main specs. Um, so if you click on it, it'll take you now to the guitar and then I'm not going to read all this information again, cause that's almost the exact same thing again. And then you go into the spec sheet and that's where you'll find the pricing. If people are trying to hunt down for the pricing, uh, later on, it is here under the spec sheet. It tells you there exactly. So let's go back. All right. And let's go back. Now let's click on the 78 eruption relic, which is the second one in the middle there. And that is one that's limited to 30 pieces. So, a lot of the a lot of the guitar is going to be the same with a few different enhancements. Excuse me. So the 78 Eruption Relic specification is limited to only 30 pieces worldwide, 25 and a half inch scale length. Nothing different there. Uh, ash strap uh, body. That's the same as well too. The bolt-on maple neck, obviously the same. 12 inch radius. Uh, the, the dots all the same. 21 mode down fretless wonder jumbo frets. Okay, so that is uh, different. All right. Obviously, I think maybe possibly uh, maybe the bold things um, are some of the things that are different. A uh, hand cut black pick guard, obviously the same. The humbucking pickup is still the exactly the same. That's the EVH Frankenstein. The eye screw strap hooks, shaler tuning keys, relic white and black stripes, hand painted lacquer finish, and the same old the same stamped neck plate. Now I'm just trying to take a look over at the uh, case candy. If I see anything that jumps out at me as being different there, I don't think so. Um, two packs of the strings, the tortoiseshell picks, backstage pass, and the no, nothing looks different there. You guys can correct me if I am wrong, but looking at it from a glance, um, I don't see anything different in the case candy on that one. Uh, let's jump over now to the big one. Okay, so you know what? Let's, let's, the price of that one, as we see there, is $12,500 uh, US. Now, that's uh, manufactured suggested retail. I know that scares a lot of people. Um, even at 78, 78, it's, it's kind of scary. However, street price is going to be considerably less than that. So, you know, inquire with some of your authorized EVH dealers and, and find out what they're going to be streeting at. They are going to be considered considerably less than that, but uh, it is an investment for sure. Before I go over to the next one, let's jump back over to the chat. And one second, I'm just going to open up some messages here as well, too. Uh, let me see here. Where am I missing off? Um, so Jack G. Martin says, you know, it's funny. Eddie made this guitar for about 150 bucks and is selling it for 25000 now, you know, here's here's the thing, too. I'm not defending Eddie Van Halen or his, his thought process in these guitars. Um, I mean, kudos. I, I think it's great the fact that we're getting all these guitars, not necessarily these really, really super expensive ones, but the fact that we, we as consumers are able now to buy any of these licensed guitars where at one time we were forced to manufacture them if we wanted anything close. So we can buy some of these entry-level guitars. We can buy some, you know, medium-priced and competitively-priced guitars. And, of course, there's some of the expensive ones, too. But it's just nice that we have that ability to, 
as Van Halen fans uh, to do that. But uh, indeed, he, you know, his first guitars was built on a dime, basically. Not, not a lot of money put into that. And you got to think back in that day, too. I mean, before Van Halen was really discovered, you know, they were driving around and beat up vehicles. Uh, you know, it was do whatever you could to get your guitar to work. And Eddie didn't have what he wanted in that day. There was nothing very, uh, really available for him. So he um, took as many parts as he could possibly muster together and put together what is known as as one of the most, probably the most iconic guitar in history. And, you know, it's a really funny story, too. You know, looking back, when I had George Lopez on, on the show, he was kind of giving some little tidbits, and you'd almost have to watch the episode back to catch this. And I'm going to watch it back again, too, because I forgot some of the things he was sharing with me. Let's jump over to the big screen here just for a second. Actually, we'll put one on the chat as well, too. There we go. Um you know, a lot of us call like the, you know, the black and yellow guitar, we'll call it Bumblebee and we'll call Frankie and we'll call this and we'll call that. And it's kind of funny uh, what George said anyways that Eddie shared with him is that Eddie didn't even know these guitars had these names that we give them, you know, like Frankie, you know, and all this kind of stuff like that. And so it's kind of neat I, as you're reading what Eddie was saying about his guitar, the black and white guitar, as he's referring to it, you know, he's not referring to it as Frankie or Frankenstein or Frank or whatever. So it's, it's I kind of believe that story that George was sharing with us that, Eddie didn't really know these names existed. And it's, it's hard to believe when you really think about it that Eddie doesn't, um, you know, know these names that we we as fans give these guitars. So it's, it's kind of humorous at the same time as well, too. Uh, Drive with Beekters here saying awesome and hello. And let me see. Uh, Raspberry says for, for 25K, Eddie should come to your house and cook you dinner when he delivers it. Yeah, kind of like Gene Simmons, right, with the Gene Simmons vault. Now, that's an idea, Eddie, if you're listening. Um, you know, I'm sure there'd be some Van Halen fans that would, um, possibly consider investing a bit more, uh, or less buying one of these 25 K's. If, uh, you wanted to kind of bring one over and warm up the guitar and, and hand it to us, that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, Charles Green is here saying, what's up people? Clarence, uh, Bridget says, hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it could be like a Gene Simmons thing, right? And uh, speaking of Gene Simmons, has anyone heard any of the uh, Van Halen material out of the vault there yet? The, his uh, his his vault set, whatever you call it. Um, anxious to hear some of that. I haven't really heard anyone, uh, or I haven't seen any of it being shared anywhere or talked about. Kind of neat. So let's jump back over to that that web uh, screen again. Bear with me here. All right, let's go back over to the Super Seventy Eight. Am I on there? There we are. Okay. So there's lots of extras in the case candy on this one. Hey, Carlos Santon's here as well too. And uh, Todd Burke says, bet Dweezel bought one. Carl Santos says, hi, guys. Saw the prices today. Yikes. Eye-watering, uh, to say the least. I, I agree with you. They're not um, they're not for us average guys, that's for sure. Uh, Super 78 specifications are limited to only eight worldwide. Um, that's Yeah, that's, that's extremely limited. I'm curious to see how many of those are sold, if not all of them sold. I have a feeling like the rich collectors will already have those reserved. Uh, a lot of times when these things are announced at NAM, a lot of sales are, are done right there in advance at, at NAM. So who knows where they're at? Obviously, the scale, nothing different there. The ash body is still the same, bolt on maple neck, oiled back finish, uh, straight 12 inch radius maple fingerboard with the dots, 21 inch, uh, uh, sorry, 21 inch, 21 mode down fretless wonder jumbo frets, the hand cut black pick guard, the Frankenstein pickup, uh, the vintage Fender Stratocaster. I screw strap uh, hooks, the Shaler tuning keys, relict white with black stripes, hand painted lacquer finish, and obviously the same neck neck plate, which is somewhat relict as well too. And uh, over to the case candy, which is quite quite cool. I'll just kind of show that picture down below again if I can. So I scroll up to that. That's uh, quite quite cool. So we'll read over the contents of that as well. Uh, and this one, you get a, a Eddie Van Halen played eruption. And signed the back of the headstock on each of the Super 78 guitars, uh, which was filmed and will be placed on an EVH thumb drive for the instrument's future owner. So that, I didn't even know that until now. I looked at these specs today two or three times, and I didn't even, I probably read that and went in one ear and went out the other. Or yeah, I wasn't even paying attention because I was in a hurry to get some of this stuff together. Uh, so that is awesome. So once again, an Eddie Van Halen, you get a guitar that's played by Eddie Van Halen. He signed the back of the headstock on each of the Super 78 guitars. It was filmed and will be placed on an EVH thumb drive for the instrument's future owner. So that is very cool. That's something you're going to treasure for sure. An autographed Van Halen vinyl. An autographed Van Halen rare original Looney Tunes Merry Melodies vinyl, which is which was extremely rare. A lot of us diehards uh, have that. Um, now, I'm assuming that will be a reprint of that vinyl, a repressing. It has to be. Um, but then again, I don't know. Uh, but it's still cool to have, even if it is a, re, a reprinting of it. 
Um, custom made period correct a G&G case with tour worn outer treatments and distressed latches. So that's very, very cool. It'll look like it's been on the road with Eddie Van Halen. The exclusive e- uh, eruption collector's booklet, booklet. I'd really like to see that. I'd really want to see what's inside that. Um, we may not get to see that for a while. Who knows? If anyone's at NAMM, can maybe take a picture of that. That'd be really cool if you're allowed to even touch it. I don't know. Um, but uh, maybe that's going to be something we won't know until an owner purchases one. Very, very cool. The, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the 78 uh, chain strap, 3-in-1 oil, and it's period correct can. Let's see. Can you see that in the picture? Because I didn't see it. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. Right underneath the certificate. That's awesome. You know those little things, and we all use them as kids on our bike chains and everything else. Eddie Van Halen using those everywhere. Who knows where when it comes to Eddie Van Halen. Um, he's he's master. He's like the MacGyver of uh, guitar repair. He could just about do anything um, in a pinch for sure. Uh, signed certificate of authenticity, the two packs of the 70 strings. Uh, the, the tortoise shell picks once again, the back, the backstage vinyl cloth sticker on a case plus one inside for you to keep, obviously to treasure, probably put in a frame with your authenticity and things like that. And then your eight by 10, 78 concert photo of Eddie Van Halen. So that is, that is pretty awesome. And I, see when they talk about the strings, they don't say the gauge here, do they? They just say the seventies era bullets, but when you, um, super bullets, you go into the specs and this is where I saw it. I couldn't actually believe that. I, well, I, I, I remembered, obviously, Eddie playing 9 to 40s at one time, but I forgot. And where does it say it? It's, it says it here somewhere, right? Where does it say Where does it say it? You guys might see this as I scroll by. There you go. Oh, no, hang on. Sorry. That's the strings. For, yeah, 9 to 40. There you go. Super, uh, I'm, I can't highlight it at the bottom. Of, there we go. See, I do have it highlighted. 70s era super bullets, 9 to 40. So I do remember when he was extremely light on the bottom. That's kind of cool. So that, you know, uh, very, very nice. Let's go back to the homepage. All right, so there we go. And, you know, I should have I should have known because uh, I knew something, should have known something was coming because Jeff Hausman from Van Halen Store was posting a really, really cool shirt, actually, um, that was uh, available in the Van Halen Store. And I'm going to try to go there right now. Actually, it's one second. Let's try this right now. Let's go vanhalenstore.com. Let's try it. Here we go. So he's got a couple new shirts. Does he have it? On? Here it is right here. Check this out right here. Look at that. Pretty cool. EVH vintage poster tee. I love it. 34 bucks from small to triple extra large. I got to get one of those as well too. So seeing something like that, I should have known that something was coming. You just, you just never know, right? You just never, ever, ever know. Let's jump back over to the uh, chat and full screen here as well too. So let's go over here. There we go. So let's have a look over at the uh, the comments. <laughs> uh, Hundred pipe says mouth watering as well. Um, Jim Dale says sell the 40th anniversary material to fans like the GNR options for appetite for descri- dest- destruction. That's yeah, I know they had some really really cool options on that. I agree with you on that. Insomniac Matt says hey, uh, oh hey my old guitar teacher did that weird hook thing for a strap button like Eddie did. That's one thing I have never done on any of my guitars. I know that's the way anyone who builds the uh, the Van Halen guitars, like uh, um, replicas, they always go with the eye hooks. I have not done that on a single guitar yet. I'm more of the Shaler strap lock guy, and I really enjoy those. Um, but I may do it on a guitar eventually. I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and do it eventually. Uh, Nocturnal Butterfly says, come on, lottery number is Woot. Dan Halen says, Eric, hope you're well. These guitars look great. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, and Todd says, surprising the original fretless wonders as uh, uh, much as Ed Benz. True. And Carlos says, I think this is cool, but strictly for the wealthy VH fans and collectors, it's unfortunate that the band didn't decide to do something, a box set or some kind of unique release. I agree. It would have been nice to see something, some kind of um, musical uh, release. The Looney Tunes, Quentin James asked about the Looney Tunes. That was like the original, it was like a promo release um, uh, before, obviously, uh, the debut album come out. Uh, extremely limited edition, uh, heavy, like the really heavy, I think it's like the 180 gram vinyl. Um, basically, it was sent to the records, uh, not record stores, but uh, radio stations for promotions of, of the, uh, the, the album. And the diehard collectors really, really go after those. I had one at one time, a limited edition, original pressing of the vinyl, which I no longer have. Got lost in a move, and now it's uh, that's a story for another day. But uh, I did have that one as well too. I think I have digital copy of it, you know, archived in MP3 here somewhere. 
Um, and Carl said, does the package come with a pot for boiling the water so you can boil your strings? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Remember the old uh, interviews where Eddie was always talking about boiling his guitar strings? And I thought for a second, Carlo, you were going to say like a, uh, a little um, brass pot and some paraffin wax. You can remember how Eddie would always boil, uh, you know, they um, dip the... Uh, the pickups in paraffin wax and he ruined a lot of good pickups as a matter of fact there's some cool stories about actually wrecking the original pickups to go into this guitar uh you know he put them in the in the paraffin wax just for a little too long and i did that before as well too uh fortunately for me it was you know cheap 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 guitars back in the day that you know my parents would buy me and uh, and I'm, i mean not cheap to my parents but uh taking the pickups out of that and if you know thinking i'm gonna try to do like what eddie van halen does and boil my pickups and i threw them in there for like a minute and there was really nothing left of them all you got to do is dip and pull and you're done and uh, i'm sitting there boiling like i'm making uh, dinner and we and those that know me here on the channel know i should not be in the kitchen in the first place so even at a young age i was a disaster in the kitchen uh, and Sam Matt says my old guitar teacher put those. Oh yeah, did I say that? Right? Oh, on a Squire Telecaster because his old strap buttons kept falling out, and the hooks were like five inches long. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing good about it. You can certainly reef those things in there. What I've had to do over the years with regular strap buttons and even the uh, Shaler strap locks, like they still go loose no matter how much I praise the Shaler strap locks. Actually, I've got a couple right here, just waiting to go on a guitar like these style. That's what I use, right? Try to show you like that. There you go. And then you actually, you know, you pull the, the pull the pin. And what I like about that is you have to literally pull the pin, whereas some of those other ones are push in. And I've seen the push in ones, and uh, they they can actually push in and stick, and your guitar could easily fall. At least these have one extra safety measure. You have to pull the pin, then release them. I like those, but they will go. They will get loose. And I never, well, I hardly ever use the uh, the uh, screw that comes with them. I always use a slightly bigger one. And then what I've had to do in some cases, it takes like toothpicks or just shavings of wood and I'll put them back inside the guitar when they're loose and I'll put a tiny bit of wood glue in there uh, or resin, uh, epoxy resin or whatever, and I'll screw them in and it'll hold, but they'll still loosen up over time. It's just the nature of the, uh, the amount of stress that goes on the guitar strap and the weight of, that, of any guitar. Uh, let me see here. So yeah, I've, I, that makes total sense, Matt, on the, uh, on the Telecaster. But it's pretty cool. Who knows what else is coming? I, I saw some other things uh, Nocturnal Butterfly shared with me that were coming out of the Fender camp. There's some things from Flea and some other guitar uh, on a, a single a single ba single pickup bass look pretty cool. I haven't even showed Junior that. He's going to go crazy when he sees that because he's a Flea fan and he loves uh, his signature basses. Um, some guitars that were coming out, some strats and stuff like that. I didn't see too, too much else. Uh, but it's nice to see a presence there for sure. It's uh, obviously, obviously nice. And the booth didn't look overly small for EVH. I mean, it's m much smaller than you're going to see at Winter Nam. But uh, who knows? We could see some more things popping out of there. It looked like from a couple other shots I saw from other people. Adam Reaver's there, actually. Uh, he was there throughout the day. He's probably there for all weekend. He was sharing some nice uh, pictures on his social media profiles as well, too. And it looked like they had a couple of the, uh, they had like the two, two lunch boxes there, I believe, and something else. I wish I would have grabbed some of those pictures to show you as well, too. I mean, everybody knows what they, what they look like, but at least we uh, got to see them at NAMM and people get to try them out as well, too. Um, oh, there you go. Yep. Uh, and Sonic Matt says Phil McKnight does the toothpicks thing for shot buttons. Yeah, I think that's a it's a pretty common thing. I mean, I'm sure many of us guitar players do that. I and uh, I use like the you know those the really large toothpicks, the ones that you can almost stab yourself with. That's the ones I use. I'll cut off the point and I'll take a piece about as long as the almost half three quarters as long as the screw and I'll stick two of them in there and I'll wedge them in, put the screw in from the shop lock and it, for the most part it's not going anywhere for quite some time. Uh, and if you look at some of Eddie's guitars, many of the guitars, especially the Frankie wants to become red, white, and black striped, the thing looks like a piece of Swiss cheese. You know, there's holes everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere on that guitar. Because, you know, he would take out, he'd move, move it over to another spot and, and screw in the screw and it would fall out. And then he'd move it over to another spot. Seriously, it was like it was like a, a termite-ridden uh, uh, old porch from like the 1800s as many holes were in that guitar. Um, Bobby Clippers here saying, Hey Eric, it's nice to know EVH collector gear is real over buying used. Say that again. Um, it's nice to know EVH collector gear is real over buying used. Uh, Todd Burks has noticed that the picks of the headstock show the strings reverse wound since this is pre Floyd. Oh, that's cool. I did not even catch that. I did not even, I wasn't paying attention close enough when, when I was uh, putting those pictures up or even uh, saving the pictures. So, very, very cool. Um, let's, for those of you that might be just jumping back in, let's jump back over to, let me just punch up the uh, website one more time again, EVH gear. And I'll go to the homepage this time. Um, so I show people how to find it. It's pretty, pretty simple. Let's go back over there right now. All right. 
So you cut right, right when you come to the website, it's right on the homepage. If you scroll a little further, there's a couple of the other things that were released. Obviously, at Winter NAM, um, the new standards, uh, that kind of stuff, combos, all the goodies. But let's go back to what we're here for today, and that's Eruption 78. So there we go. Once again, just for those of you that might be jumping in late in the program here as well, too, talks about, um, you know, Eddie's, uh, what his thoughts are on that guitar. And I, I like the way here I said it earlier in the show, I said, where is it? Um, where does he say that here? The white and black guitar, as he always calls it, as he calls it, the white and black guitar. He doesn't call it Frankie. He doesn't call it anything else other than that. So that's pretty cool. As, as iconic as his guitar is, that's what he was to, how he refers to his guitar. So that's pretty awesome. Talks about the uh, the manufacturing process of it. Some really, really cool photos that uh, some of us may have seen, some of us may not have seen. And then the three Eruption 78 models. Uh, very, very cool. Your Eruption highlights. And I guess while we're here, I might as well go through the gallery here. And I'll show you this one more time. I did show you some of those earlier, but this is a good way to show you. So this is the taping and untaping process. So what you're seeing there. Uh, this is an important thing to say too. A lot of people, even on the original Stripe series, like I have here, and a lot of you have, um, people are thinking those were like a uh, a vinyl. What's the word I'm looking for? Like a uh, stencil or whatever underneath, and then lacquered over top. And uh, in that case, and in this case, these are taped, and you're seeing the tape being removed here as well too. Uh, so pretty awesome. There's your uh, your strings, so that you can actually see the. Can you see nine to forty on that? It looks. I'm, I'm blind, but it looks like you can see that. So that's your uh, 70s era super bullet strings, the tour uh, worn period correct guitar case. That's awesome. Let's continue on with some of the pictures here. There's some of the relicking on the back, uh, the neck plate all scratched up and everything as well too. So for the, the, those of you that are the builders out there, uh, I'm sure you'll have comments on how the accurate this one is uh, compared to uh, the original. It's hard to say. I'm not. I, I don't have the eye that a lot of you guys have. So I'm not even going to comment how accurate it is. Uh, it looks pretty accurate to me, but like I say, I don't build them, and I don't know. I don't go under the the microscope like a lot of people do. Um, but I'm curious to hear people's thoughts on this one because I know there were some discrepancies when it was come to the original one, the twenty five thousand uh, dollar, you know, the red, white, and black Frankie. And there was a lot of people saying this and that, and the reflectors were wrong, and all this other kind of stuff. I'm curious to see to see. Um, what your thoughts are. And if you're watching this video after the fact, not when we're live here, comment down below and just share your thoughts um, because I'm being honest. I don't know how accurate it is to the original. Share your thoughts and see how they did on the reproduction of this one. So there you go. Nice uh, in a rusted out relic um, uh, bridge. The pickup, the pole pieces are rusted on the pickup. Even the tone knob is really, really aged. Each of the screws on the pick guard completely rusted out and even the rusting of the, uh, uh, the jack as well, the input jack, uh, output jack, whatever you want to call it, um, everything, everything is is just it looks superb. It looks it looks pretty darn good. What am I missing over in the uh, um, uh, thirty one fifty XLs are nine to forty? Okay, Daryl Daryl McMillan says that thirty one fifties. Okay, there you go, perfect. Uh, it's like how many more pictures do we have? So that's a great photo right there. A great photo. And there again, there's the overall case. That would be that would surely be nice to have. And there's the painting process again. So, what are your thoughts? I mean, obviously, other than price, uh, price—that's <laughs> a different story. Let's jump back over to the chat. So, price, obviously, it's a little bit out of reach for some of us, uh, most of us, and uh, probably most of us here in the chat. I'm not. I'm certainly not trying to label anyone with their financial income. I know I'm certainly not going to have one. But uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think of, first of all, the fact that we've got three to choose from. And uh, just you're curious on your thoughts. Uh, volume knobs say tone. Yes, exactly. That's way, that's an Eddie Van Halen thing for sure. Uh, Eddie always says volume equals tone. And anytime you'll see him with a guitar that will have a tone knob, obviously the Wolfgang's, the, the, uh, not the Wolfgang special, but the Wolf original Wolfgang had it um, because that, that was something originally that Hartley Peavy wanted to have. And, you know, Eddie had to, Eddie was like, uh, you know, we're going to compromise on the special. They ended up going with uh, just volume, not tone. And, you know, a lot of people are thinking, well, if I don't have a tone knob on there, it's not going to meet the masses. Uh, people out there are not going to buy a guitar with just, uh, just a volume knob. That was Eddie Van Halen's thing was volume equals tone, hence the kind of the little joke with the tone knob. So that's that's what you got on that one, Quentin. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm I'm kind of excited about it. Just some buzz. It's I look at any kind of news coming out of Van Halen um, as as good. Any, I mean, when when it goes radio silence forever, that's when I think we're gonna have some things to complain about. Um, you know, it's just it's it, it's something that's new from Van Halen esque ish. Whatever. I I enjoy that. 
Um, there you go. Things are worth what people are willing to pay for them with only eight of the Super 78s still sell at that price quickly. And I agree with that. They're only worth what people are willing to pay. And obviously, people are willing to pay this or, or else they wouldn't be manufacturing them. It's just plain and simple. They, people aren't into business. Eddie Van Halen's a smart man. He's not gonna, he doesn't get into business just to make these guitars and let them sit around uh, in, a, in a factory somewhere or um, a wood pile. You know, he's, he's smart that way for sure. So they will sell, and um, research, research does prove that people will purchase these for sure. Carlos Santon says, I really do love these, and I think it's great that Eddie played Eruption on those eight limited guitars and filmed it. Very cool. If I had the money, I would probably buy one. I, I would love to buy one as well, too. Uh, it would be very cool to have that, have a guitar given to you by, uh, by well, sold to you from Eddie personally that he played on, whether it's Eruption or whatever. And, uh, you know, it'd be really, really cool if that is what, if what he's literally doing, if he's playing Eruption on them. I would love to, all the people that have these, compare the videos and just see, because I'm sure he's going to do things better and different every time, because, you know, he never plays the same thing twice the same way. I'd love to see the different variances and then everyone could take all the pieces and edit them and make the world's perfect flawless eruption piece to combining all the original clips of Eddie playing. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's a good point. Uh, Raspberry says seems more of a collector item than a working guitar. I'm sure it sounds great. Um, but I but if, for, if I was one of these guys that had the disposable income, that's what I would probably do as well, too. As much as I'm, I'm a guy that gets guitars to play them, I really wouldn't want to play this guitar too much. I'd probably strum it a little bit, may, probably go play Eruption on it as well, like everyone else and their next-door neighbor is going to try to do, just because it's you're forced to do that when you pick up that guitar, and then I'd want to put it away. So I, I, kind, of, I kind of agree, Raspberry. It's more of a, a collector's piece for sure, and um, that's probably the, the, most of the people that are going to be able to afford it. Uh, but looking at that one, the, um, the 78 Eruption at 7878, you're looking at, I'm just going to venture a guess, I'm going to venture, I guess, street price around forty-five to five thousand, forty-five hundred to five thousand ish. Um, I, I kind of forget the uh, the math which is involved in that, but it's I'm thinking that's somewhere around the price you're going to see uh, that street at. And like I was talking to one of my buddies today, I won't say who who it was because I don't want to disclose his um, guitar dealings or things like that. But he's like, maybe I'll sell a couple of my other EVH guitars and that, and I'll, and I'll buy one of these, and and he could do that. And that's the thing, you know, you can always, I don't like to sell gear to buy gear. I really don't. I'd rather go without the thing I'm uh, searching for as opposed to, um, as opposed to get selling gear because then you get rid of two guitars, two, three guitars, you get another one. And then, then you're like missing those ones. Right. And I've been down that road before. Thank goodness. I've got a good, uh, a good spouse here in Nocturnal Butterfly, Sandra Lee, where she downright refuses uh, to let me sell stuff. And that's, you know, it's unheard of, which is pretty cool. So I'm very blessed that way. Um, and Carlos says, no, I'd play it all the time. I'm one of those guys who would buy a classic sports car and drive it everywhere. That So you do have a good point. And I'd want to, and I probably, you know, it'd be one of those things where I would say I wouldn't play it. I'd pick it up and I'd probably bang it. And the good thing is, if I had one of the relic ones, that, I, that would be the perfect one to bang, because then you could say, oh, no, that's exactly where Eddie had his his bang, right where I dropped it on my, my coffee table is right where Eddie relic. And you could tell, you could you could pull someone's bluff, call someone's bluff on that. Um, there you go. That's And, and Nocturnal Butterfly is agreeing with Carlo as well, too. Jim Dale says, with the current signature, Edward Van Halen guitar is available in stealth black and white. What color would you like to see in the future? Very good question. Very good question. Um Hmm. I'm a, I'm a big fan of red. I think red would be really cool. One thing I really would like to see, you know how I've got, um, well, not just how I have, many of us have, uh, the, the burst, the, the, uh, standards and the burst series and the standards purple. I had used to have PV made a very, very nice, uh, well, Eddie with PV when he was with him at the time made a very, very nice, uh, flame purple, uh, Wolfgang. And I had one and I sold it. And miss it. I, see there again. See that's example of getting rid of a guitar to get another guitar, and I miss it greatly. So to answer uh, Jim's question, I would love to see a purple, a, a USA series. I would love to see that, or even in a special. Even in a special would be great as well too. Be great. Um, and if, yeah, that's cool. Julian says a flip flop Wolfgang. So kind of like the Chrome Illusion paint they call it. Uh, that'd be kind of neat. And amber. Yeah, the, yeah, there you go. The Todd Burke says he'd love to see the amber. And that's cool. Uh, Jim Dale says, I'd like to see what incorporates, uh, one that incorporates the logo and its colors. And Todd says, amber flame top. I would love to see that. And actually, I'm going to grab one of my PVs here. One sec. 
which will give you an example. One reason why I'm grabbing this one is just, just last night I restrung this one up with some new um, NYXLs 9 to 42s. So there you go. This one, this one is a beautiful guitar. Absolutely beautiful. I love the flame on that. So if they could do that on, on that guitar, that would be phenomenal. I'd love to see that. Uh, Mark Taylor says, I have so many guitars that I miss. I am never selling one again. That That's the thing. If, if, if you can find other measures to... To not get rid of a guitar to get a guitar, um, it's worth it. The worth the weight is worth it because you're always gonna miss that guitar. Like last night, I was playing a bunch of guitars in here last night. I'm playing this one because I restrung it up. I restrung my um, Line Six Variax, and here's the thing: this is really neat here in the house too. I'm going back and forth from from nine gauge strings on these guitars, tuned down a half a step to ten gauge strings on the Variax and a Kramer over there. So it's kind of neat going back and forth from some of these different guitars. But I was playing this guitar, playing my PRS playing a couple other different guitars thinking if I ever got rid of this guitar to get this guitar and I'm saying to myself like I can't I could never get rid of this guitar because it plays so good and every guitar I have here in the studio mine and juniors they all have something really special to them and it's like it's like you you could live without it but as soon as they're gone you're going to be like oh man I really miss that guitar I just wish it, it I, I miss the way it played you know certain type things right so yeah I'd never never get rid of a guitar unless you absolutely have to. And of course, you know, if your family's in, in desperate needs or something like that, then obviously you got to do what you got to do to, uh, you know, to, to make ends meet. But uh, Jim Dale says, love that amber color too. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and I'm Somniac Matt says, on top of the remix of classic guitars, I wouldn't mind if ESP did a limited reissue of the guitar James Hetfield used in Seattle. Yeah, I'm curious to see what's um, what's happening over there at ESP. I haven't really seen anything from Nam. I've been very busy yesterday and today, and I was only on social media enough today to grab some of these photos. Um, so I didn't really get to see what everybody else was doing in the other different booths. Uh, but I'd love to see what he's what he's got, uh, what they have over there. I should say at ESP. Um, the only reason why I say he is because one of my buddies works at for ESP, so that's why I say he. I I say that uh, just out of a Freudian slip. Um, and Charles Green says earlier, so many toys and not nearly enough cash. Uh, I know, I hear you. But it, the way I look at this is just something I want to uh, to share with you on the on the channel here. Obviously, you know, with the name EVH and Gear TV, people want to. They come to me at least asking, do you know, do you know anything about this? You know, and I didn't know anything about it till today. I'm not going to lie and say, oh yeah, I had all this information sent to me way in advance. Nothing was sent to me. Uh, I I was given zip none i was given nothing so what we're seeing here today <laughs> is i'm learning with you i mean uh, obviously i put it posted on the evh and gear tv facebook page today but i had no previous knowledge of this guitar coming out so uh it is what it is we have it and we're sharing it and it's more of a uh, reading some specs with you today so uh let me see raspberry says um I play acoustic every day, and no matter what gauge you have on electric, so they'll feel super light. Yeah, exactly. Coming from my tens, tuned to concert pitch, and then playing these guitars, I feel like I'm playing a little child's mandolin, um, or like a, a little you know ten dollar guitar because I'm just strangling the strings. But it's kind of cool. I thought, can I go up to tens on all my guitars? I'm like, no. Um, my fingers are getting stronger, but it's a nice, it's a nice yin and yang kind of thing. Um, you know, certain, certain things, especially with the Variax, I need tens on that just to make it track nice. Uh, cause you know, it's got like the, uh, piezo system and everything in there and the computer software to emulate different guitars. So I, I think tens work nicer on a guitar like that because it's closer to an acoustic sound when you're playing acoustic. Uh, what pickups are in the Amber PV? These are the, the, the factory, you know, the factory ones right from PV. So those, those are untouched. Uh, those are factory PVs. Um, and Daryl says, uh, he only sells a guitar if. If, if, if he doesn't like it or upgrading yeah if you got a guitar that um it, it just does not get played ever and really is serves you no purpose to keep it then i do agree right there wholeheartedly get rid of it and get traded in on some pedals or trade it in towards another guitar or move it flip it and put it into something that you do like and you do enjoy and uh, then it's then it's a good it's a good move but don't go the opposite way and, and get rid of something just you know if, yeah and don't keep it either yeah uh, he wants a bumblebee. That's Quentin James, and to me, that's cool. And, every, and a lot of people love that guitar. And if I had to pick a couple out of the line that are my least favorite, and just here, just again, my opinion, my least favorite of the line are the bumblebee. And I, I should technically have one. 
I will probably get one just because I should have one in the collection. And I'm not a fan of the star guitar either. I just, I, I'm not a big fan of that one. Um, other than that, not everything else I like and want, but that's the only two that I, I if I had to go without, um, I could, I could live without those ones, but I'll probably get at least a bumblebee down the road as well too. Uh, <laughs> um, and some Matt says, uh, I sold three guitars, two electric, one acoustic. One of the electrics was a lot more trouble than it was worth. It was a cheap Japanese knockoff of a jazz master that was broken. Uh, there was a semi hollow. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to move these things. Um, you know, I've, I've got a guitar here, one of the cheaper music mans. I was almost getting, getting going to consider selling just because junior and i we're, we want to uh, build it and we're going to do like a um uh, like a pound cake uh replica kind of you know like the uh, one used for uh, um and the, the pound cake video and i think run around i think maybe it's run around i forget I, I forget which video now but anyways we're going to stripe that one up it's a pretty easy one to stripe the, uh, i don't feel like doing it and it's just sitting in a pile over in the corner i was going to sell it but i got a good set of pickups from adam reaver his new futon pickups and uh, there's zebra bobbins as well too i needed some pickups for it anyways so now i've got the pickups i got a floyd uh i just gotta get some spray paint and get i'm gonna get paint and that thing and keep it so instead of selling it i'm gonna turn it into a playable guitar and it had a really really nasty floyd that came on it because it's the entry level ones the uh sterling not sterling what is it you know the um i forget what you call them now totally totally lost olp is that what it is that what it is like the lowest line um, the Floyd that was on there was horrible, uh, but I've got some extra Floyds here as well too. Detune as a whole work, so I'm going to hop that baby up. It'll be a fun player for Junior and I, and it'll also look cool here in the studio as well too. Um, Raspberry says, only guitar I ever got selling was a Fender uh, HM Strat that had a nice crackle finish on it. Floyd Rose was a weird time for Fender. Any other guitars I got rid of, I, I don't miss at all. Yeah, I could I could see you missing that guitar. That's, that's a cool guitar. Um and Todd says, um, agreed about Star and Bumblebee, hated the Rasta guitar. Yeah, I'd have to say that would be if they made that guitar, who knows? I mean, that could be something down the road. I can't see them making that guitar, but that'd be one I wouldn't jump to either. I would probably circle back later in my later, later part of my years and come back and say, okay, I need the I need the Rasta, I need the Star, I need the Bumblebee, let's complete the collection. And that would be that day that I decide I want to get those three guitars, that there's not one left available for sale on the face of the earth. That's just the way things go for me. And uh, that's probably what would happen. Uh, Carlos says, yeah, I've never liked the star guitar. I love the bumblebee. I quite like the Rasta too, but Eddie gave it to Dweezil because he thought the guitar was too heavy and he didn't like how it felt. And as far as I know, he still has the one now that, uh, Scott Smith gave back, back to him that he built and gave to Eddie. Uh, that was a pretty cool gesture as well, well too. And knowing Scott, he probably, uh, had built it to exact specs, probably same weight and everything as well too. Very awesome. So that pretty much concludes the show, guys, so there really wasn't much of a show tonight. I just wanted to pop on here live, say hi, let you know that everything is all good over here in, in our world, and give you some updates on the show as well, too. Like I said, tomorrow night, we've got Bill Nero on the show. going to be lots of Wolfgang discussion tomorrow. going to be a lot of fun. And uh, back again over on the Helix Hour uh, on Sunday. And I've got uh, Leo, like I said, from uh, Frog Leap Studios. That's going to be crazy. Uh, that guy is just insane what he does on his YouTube channel. I don't know how he does it, um, but he keeps putting out quality content uh, um, like like mad. It's insane. I have a hard enough time with my channel with like 7,000 subscribers. He's got 2.5 million or even higher. I don't know how he does it. He must have a team, obviously, assisting him. So, uh, But it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of other sh uh, guests lined up. Actually, coming up, too, there's a couple other... Um, I wish I had my notepad. I do have my notepad, but I don't have it handy to my cheat sheet. Um, Aviation Gear TV does have some other great guests coming up as well, too, a week from tomorrow. Uh, Mike Orlando, um, he's going to be on the show. We're really looking forward to having him uh, on, on the program from bands like Adrenaline Mob and many others. Uh, Shred Demon, for sure. And uh, thank you, Todd. He says, uh, good stuff, brother man. Have a great night. You as well. And then July 11th, I've got Paul Gilbert. Paul Gilbert on the show. That's going to be pretty awesome. That's a, it's an irregular night, so make a note of this one because you may forget. And I know you'll uh, the, of all the shows you're going to want to tune in when they're live, Paul Gilbert's going to be one you're going to want to try to watch live. It's a Wednesday night, Wednesday, July 11th, and that's at 5 p.m. Eastern, which is going to be about 3 o'clock, obviously, Pacific for a lot of you people that watch. Uh, keep in mind, yeah, Paul Gilbert, Quentin James says, uh, a lot of you may even be at work, uh, you know, in, in the workplace. So tell your boss the day before I say, uh, Paul Gilbert's going to be on your buddy's show. And can you uh, can you watch it while you're working? I'm sure your boss will let you. He or she uh, will understand it's Paul Gilbert. And if, if not, then um, quit your job and just go home and watch it. Well, I don't recommend that. I, I'll, although I do want you to watch in any shape or form, I don't recommend you quit your job. 
But if that's what it takes to watch the show, so be it. Uh, Charles Green says, great. No problem. Paul freaking Gilbert from Quentin James. So don't forget, everyone. That's it. I'm going to let you all go. Uh, it's still uh, early enough wherever you are to go enjoy it. Well, except for uh, over in Ireland, like uh, <laughs> we had earlier uh, from Richard Henry. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to uh, to see <laughs> good advice, Quentin says. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern. Same time, same channel. And where is my... I got too many screens open. I always do. And uh, I'm surprised we made it through this. It's all good. Mark Taylor says thanks, Eric. Uh, Everyone, you guys rock. We will see you very soon. Tomorrow night, it is 9 o'clock. Until then, cheers. I am now on Patreon. If you enjoy my content and wish to support my channel and what I do, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash evhgeartv. Your support assures the continued growth of this channel and a fun community in which to share our love for Van Halen, music gear, and much more. My name is Eric Redman, Booking Guitar. Video production services provided by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones, and official Van Halen merchandise is provided by VanHalenStore.com.